Welcome back, everyone. Today, we learn about a super cookie. I like this story. This is interesting. I like stories like this. Should come as a surprise to no one, but uh, it looks like uh, Meta and Yandex uh, secretly had a super cookie that um, they were allegedly using to track Android users. I say allegedly because I don't know. I'm just reading this. So yeah, according to this headline here, uh, Meta Yandex secretly tracked Android users browsing. Uh, if you're not familiar with what Yandex is, it's basically like the Russian Google. It's like a search engine. And they provide internet services. As international researchers have uncovered a covert tracking method used by Meta and Russian tech giant Yandex that allows their Android applications to monitor user web browsing habits, even when users believe they are browsing privately. The technique, which affects billions of Android users, exploits a system loophole to link anonymous browsing sessions with user identities by connecting websites' tracking scripts directly to native smartphone applications. Meta began deploying this method in September 2024, while Yandex has employed it since 2017 without detection. All right, so that's what happened. Uh, I think of this as kind of like a super cookie, even though it may not technically be a cookie. Uh, that's kind of what it sounds like. Um, and uh, you have to take your hat off. It's uh, kind of an impressive uh, exploit here. The tracking system works when users have Facebook, Instagram, or various Yandex applications installed on their Android devices. When users visit websites containing Metapixel or Yandex Metrica tracking scripts, Embedded on approximately 20% of popular websites, these scripts establish connections through local host ports to communicate directly with the native apps. And so if I understand this correctly, so it's not just installing the apps on your phone that does the whole thing. Um, it really takes off when you visit websites that are using those tracking scripts for whatever reason. You know, websites will track habits for their own analytics uh, for whatever their business goal might be. So when you have both of these things working together, you can carry your information across. So the exploit goes around private browsing and uh, VPNs. Uh, this bypasses Android's privacy protections, including incognito mode, VPN usage, and the operating system's app sandboxing designed to prevent such data sharing. The method allows companies to associate web cookies and browsing histories with device identifiers like Android advertising IDs, effectively de-anonymizing users' online activities. Uh, so what now? So hours after the research became public today, investigators observed that Meta's tracking communication had ceased entirely, with code references to the tracking cookies largely removed. So yeah, so apparently this was in there, now it's gone. But now my first question in a situation like this would be, would something like this be mentioned in terms of service? Uh, because nobody reads the terms of service, maybe they could bury something like this in there. Uh, but the answer I got, I asked perplexity, uh, it says most likely no. So highly technical or potentially controversial tracking methods like the one described are almost never explicitly listed in terms of service or privacy policies. Companies generally rely on broad catch-all language that gives them legal cover without alerting users to the specifics of their data collection techniques. So as a user, uh, I guess you should never be surprised uh, when exploits are discovered uh, to what length you would go to to obfuscate your browsing habits is really up to you. These, these apps are optional. You don't have to use Facebook or Instagram uh, or you don't have to use them on your phone. You could maybe use the browser versions if you wanted to uh, to be tracked less, I suppose. But um, you know, really, it's uh, it's up to you. One Reddit user said, "Time to delete it." Yes, the apps are optional. If you use these apps that are free, you can pretty much expect that uh, they have to make money somehow. So they might be employing various methods of getting your information and doing what they want with it. But of course, uh, those of you, my viewers, are interested in these sorts of things, probably take steps to protect your privacy, but um, it's, uh, it's always interesting to see what new exploits are discovered. 
This is something that I get into in a novella that I'm writing about a hacker who kind of goes on these rants about how uh, normal people are totally unaware that uh, their whole lives or some digital version of themselves is out there in a database um, sort of being mined for information. But then the, the philosophical question would be, is that uh, you or is it just a, a, a sort of a digital avatar that represents your habits? Are you your habits or are you um, something more uh, intrinsic? Right, you're you're a unique person. You have your likes and dislikes. You have your soul, and the stuff that they have can really only represent your habitual online activity. And the extent to which that is an expression of you or not you, well, that's something to be discussed. Uh, but yes, uh, I'm going to leave the video there. I'll catch up with you all next time. Thanks for watching.